we're doing a series on prayer. I'm doing the first one, and I'm very excited about that. And we've even got a, a special Lynn session in a few weeks' time. Lynn, who heads up prayer for uh, Tear Fund, uh, has got some stuff she's going to share with us too, and there's different ones going to be talking about prayer. Today, uh, my kind of brief is prayer and spiritual warfare, uh, and I'm going to base, uh, base it around Matthew 6. So if you want to turn to Matthew 6 and the Lord's Prayer, probably one of the most, the most famous prayer in the world ever. Who, who, I mean, when I was at school, we said this every day, off rope. How, how many of you, but that, that phased out. How many of you experienced that? A few. And hymns and stuff. How many of you like Lord's Prayer? What's the Lord's Prayer? I don't know. Just, yeah, okay. Um, but the, if you turn to Matthew, Matthew 6, and we're gonna, it, it crops up twice in the New Testament, once in, in Matthew and once in Luke. And in the Luke account, Jesus is responding to a question from his disciples. So they've been around him for a while now and seeing the amazing things that he's doing, the miracles that are happening. And also in the Luke account, you see much more how Jesus is constantly disappearing to have prayer time with the Lord. Uh, there's a verse in Luke 5. It says that he, it says verse 15, now even more the report about him went abroad. So this is early in the ministry of Jesus. And great crowds are gathering to hear him and be healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. And then that's recorded over and over again and what you have to think and remember that things we know I'm just reminding you this is Jesus this is son of God this is 100% man 100% God and even Jesus withdrew to pray like so we have him in us we have the Holy Spirit with us we have our Bible you know we have a kind of a ton of benefits of being in the kingdom of God being part of his family and yet we're quite, not quite Jesus yet, are we? <laughs> Although he's with us and he's in us, uh, it's like how much more do we need to try and find those spaces like he did? I know it's challenging in modern life, but one of the things he did is he withdrew to desolate places. And I would equate that these days at least to a place where all your notifications are switched off. <laughs> Probably your phone, your laptop, and your tablet are not even in the desolate place that you choose. That could be your garden, could be your toilet, it could be a back room, it could be just somewhere where you'd shut out the noise, the kids and whatever, for a little while. And you know, I've been alive a long time and I've gone through different phases of life, but always find a spot to make this happen. When we had little kids, I just got up earlier, just kind of fight, because, you know, and beating kids is, is a tough gig terms of the getting up earlier piece but I just find a space before the day early mornings are great before the day breaks in on you but not everybody's a morning person late at night just look, Lydia looking at me so there's a few non-morning people here so there's not a there's not a rule but I just think if Jesus did it my goodness don't we need to to make a space to turn the noise off turn your phone off for goodness sake buy a bible so you don't read it on your phone I mean, just simple, practical things like that, because then you don't have the oh, I'll just scroll, fa I'll just scroll Facebook, I'll just check my Instagram account, and really, what you're supposed to be doing is listening to Jesus and talking to Him. All right, that's just very practical. Turn the phone off, do something like that. Get a Bible that's like paper pages, and pray through that and read that. Um, just doesn't half help that noise that goes on in our heads and suddenly you actually feel a bit less busy because there's a bit less noise so the disciples are observing this in Jesus's life and then they're observing the crowds increasing and gathering and the miracles increasing and gathering and then you deliberately withdraw to a desolate place turn off his phone get away even from his disciples just to be with his father and we don't know any more than that, other than later on he starts to take them, some of them with him, and he's transfigured. I mean, he just becomes this shine, light shines out of him and stuff. So they say to him, and they don't ask him many questions in Scripture, but one of the questions they ask him is, teach us to pray. 
teach us to pray. And it was common then for the rabbis, which is what they saw Jesus as being, to teach their followers how to pray. John did it for his disciples, John the Baptist. And what they would do was give them uh, outline prayer. So when I was growing up in school, the Lord's Prayer was something we said, wrote. It was like, our Father art in heaven, that'll be your name. You know, and some of us were like, as fast as you can say it to get to the end. But it was never meant to be just something you just said over and over and over because it was meant to be an outline structure and each of the phrases is like a jumping off point. Do you see what I mean? So it gives stru- what he's doing is giving a structure for our prayer life because one of the difficult things is obviously we're very used to the material world and suddenly we, we want to interact with a God that we know is there but we can't see him and we're in this strange place of how, how, how do you communicate to God and sometimes it can just end up a bit like a soup can't it and it's all kind of turning around in your brain and in your heart and so Jesus kind of gave us some help he gave us this so what we're going to do this morning is we're going to go through the Lord's Prayer and, and we're going to do some of it together Okay, so be a bit interactive, and I'm going to ask you to join in some bits, all right? And some really, really incredibly juicy, exciting bits in the Lord's Prayer. And it's not even structured how, kind of if you grew up in church, so it's not really structured how you'd even think it would be structured. But that's Jesus all the way, isn't he? He's always breaking the box. He's always just like, this is how you pray. Okay, are we there? Are we in Matthew 6? So he says to them, Pray like this. So remember, it's, it's a structure. It's, it's a statement of truth, of reality that we're then meant to pray around, think about, bounce off on, and then go to the next and the next, and so on. So the, and so the first place he dives right in. This is amazing. This is amazing for them to hear. It's still amazing for us to hear. The first thing you do when you're praying to God is say, Our Father who's in heaven. Oh, look, it's there. <laughs> Our Father who's in heaven. No, no like preliminaries, no like working up to it, no cleaning yourself up, no sorting yourself out, no, oh, is he going to accept me? Am I, am I all right to be in his presence? No, straight in. My dad. I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I'm here. I, honor you. I, I just want to speak to you as my dad. Isn't that beautiful? That's the place to start, my dad, or, he, or even our father. So it's also corporate, so he's teaching disciples to pray. We have a father in heaven. And I'm so glad he's in heaven. I mean, that, that thing that we live with, which is we live at the intersection of heaven and earth, is sometimes difficult for us. But our dad, God, the king, lives in heaven. And I don't think that's some distant, cloudy place. It, it's just a, like another dimension is probably the best way to describe it. But it's alongside us and the, we live in the intersection of that reality and the one we can touch and feel. Our Father. So start there. We just say it together. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. And then he says, hallowed be your name. Now in that line, there is a whole mess of exciting stuff hallowed be your name it, it what does that mean it means that his name is to be treated as sacred to con- be considered holy worthy of respect valued praised his name and, and in christianity we talk a lot about in the name of the lord the name the name but we don't really understand sometimes what that would have meant to them so all these fishermen and different tax collectors and guys that were gathering around him were all trained in the Old Testament. So they knew stuff that we still don't know. Uh, but one of the things they did know was about the names of God. And God revealed himself to Israel through their history at different times through different actions. And then he would say, now I am the Lord who's this and I'm the Lord who's this. So he'd actually give himself different names by which he could be known. All right? So, 
So there's, there's a lot more in this hallowed be your name than just, oh, praise you, Jesus, move on. It, it, it's actually quite rich. So I'm just going to give you a few names because I haven't got time to do them all. I'm just going to do probably seven or eight of the many. And I'm only going to do the Jehovah ones because there's also the El ones, Elohim and El Shaddai, and we're not, we're not even doing them today. And all of these, there are moments in Israel's history with them corporately or with individuals where he's just say, I've just shown yourself, myself to you as being this kind of God. So when we say this, we can, we can start to praise and thank him for all these different aspects of his nature that we can enjoy. Yeah? So I, I, please do this at home and we'll do it together today as well. So here's, here's one to get your teeth round. Jehovah Makedishim, just trips off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's the Lord who sanctifies you. That's basically, you're thanking him, you're worshipping him because he's forgiven you and made you holy as a free gift. Thank you, Lord. That's his name. That means his very nature of God is to forgive and make you holy. Thank you, God, you're my forgiveness. Should we say that together? Thank you, God. You are my forgiveness. It's in your very nature to forgive me when I fail, when I slip up. Yahweh, please remember this name, Makedeshim. I can't remember it, but that's what it means. And the next one we've got is Yahweh Rohi, which is the Lord is my shepherd. So like the Psalm 23, probably the most famous psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. That means he cares for me and he leads me. And he leads me kindly. He leads me with care. Thank you, Lord. I honor you as my shepherd. So we're just taking time to honor the Lord for who he is and who he is to us. So thank you, Lord. You're my shepherd. Thanks for leading me. You want to say that? Thank you, Lord, you're my shepherd. Thank you for leading me. So we're hallowing his name. We're honoring who he is. And then is uh, another one. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. We talk a lot about this. The Lord who is present. He's not distant. He's not over there. He's not in another room. He's not above your head. He is present. That's his nature. It's not, this is not just a groovy thing that, that we kind of figured out one day. This is actually the very nature of God is to be present with you. And that's what Jesus came to demonstrate. Uh, and he was called Emmanuel, is another name. He's God with us. So he is always with us. He is your best friend. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God is Jehovah Shammah. We just want to honor you, Lord, that you are the God who is present with us. We do that. We honor you, Lord, that you are God present with us. Let's say that again. We honor you, Lord, you are God who is present with us. So in your own prayer life, you can do this. We could put these names out. It's actually not hard to to Google them if you want and all the others you can spend all day going through them so I'm not going to do all of them this morning and I'll just pick out a couple more there's Jehovah Rapha the Lord is your healer and Jehovah another tricky one for the teeth Jehovah Tzitzkanu which means the Lord is your righteousness I love this he is my righteousness. Righteousness, which means right standing with God. That means right relationship with God. That means standing in the very favor of God is a gift through Jesus. And it's the nature of God to make us righteous by gift. Wow. To make us right with him in right relationship through the gift of his son who did the work to make that a reality. Thank you, Lord, you are my righteousness. Huh. I stand clean, whole, and right before you 
because you gifted that to me in Jesus Christ. Not by works, not by striving, by a gift. So just thank him that he's our righteousness. Thank you, Lord. You are my righteousness. You're doing all right with this. Okay. And I'm going to mention this because it's another one of my favorites. And it's probably the most famous one is Jehovah Jireh, not Gyro, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. God reveals himself by, as, and by nature a God of provision, of material financial provision to his people. Whew, we're going to talk a bit more about that in a minute, so we won't dwell on that too long now. But he's interested in, and the provider of jobs, housing, income, promote all the stuff we were declaring is actually that practical so thank you lord you are my provider and uh, last one for now jehovah nisi the lord is my banner which is really speaking about he's the god who leads us in triumph he's the god who is the god of victory and he leads us in triumph through our lives through our difficulties through the things that challenge us as we follow him as our shepherd we will be led in triumph So here we go, we've only done Our Father, You Are in Heaven, Hallowed Be Your Name. This is exciting prayer time, isn't it? This is just already, I don't use this all the time, but I use this quite often, particularly if it's sort of early morning and my head's a bit blurry. It's like, I need, I need structure and coffee to get a really, anoint, a really anointed prayer time going, right? So <clears throat> the Lord, and there's loads, there's still more Jehovah ones that we just don't have time to cover today. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Again, we could do a whole message on this verse alone, and we've done many in the past, but your kingdom, so your, we're now saying to, 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 to the Lord, we're saying your kingdom, your, your rule, your heavenly reality come and be manifest on the earth. So I don't want this to be just an idea, Lord, that I glory in now. I've, and many of the things we've just gone through are features of the kingdom of heaven because they're features of God. I, I'm now praying that those realities would actually start to show up in life. It would show up in my family. It would show up in my work. It would show up in my, in my finances. It would show up in my mind. I pray that, and, and, and also we're starting to pray that through me he would show up in other people's circumstances, okay? We're praying the kingdom of God, so all those beautiful things we're starting to learn about God, he's righteous, he's a provider, he's the healer, he's the, he's the triumphant one, all those things we're starting to say, your kingdom come on the earth now, let's see it. This is stuff is for real, it's not for the sweet by and by, you know, it's not, it, it, it's for now. Your kingdom come and your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And this is a great moment in a prayer time to say, I really need, we all have stuff we don't know what God's will is, don't we? There's times we're like, I don't know what to do. Maybe, do I change my job? It may be, do we have more kids? Maybe, I don't know, just don't know what to do. This is, God, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life. What's your will? Show me your will. Tell me what to do. Ho not in with some sort of robotic obedience thing but I re we really need his wisdom don't we we really need the spirit to lead us as children of God and it's a great moment to say God I'm going to pause pause the noise in my life I take a space say show me your will I don't really know what to do right now with this question it could be a work question it could be my goodness this child I'm raising is driving me to distraction what do I do just give me a strategy give me an answer pause Listen, give him a chance to say something to you. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, the language here is not like we used to say it in school. Let's put it this way. So we'd be kind of trotting our way through this and even now. But <clears throat> the language of your kingdom come and your will be done is a lot bossier it's like putting your foot down. It's like, God, your kingdom, come. 
Come in this thing. Come in that situation. Come in that situation. Just, I bring it to you. Now come, kingdom of God. Come with all your righteousness, peace and joy right here. It's got a bit more. So could we stand? We're going to put our foot down. Is that right? Putting your foot down for the king and his kingdom. So think of a situation that you really need the kingdom of God to come in. That his righteousness, his peace, his joy, all the things we've been talking about. I need this to come here. Yeah? And then we're going to say, kingdom of God, come. And as we do it, we're going to stamp our feet and get kind of stirred up about it. I don't know. Fake it till you make it. Here we go. (laughs) Think about that thing. Kingdom of God, come into my situation. Here we go. Kingdom of God, come into my situation in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job, church. This is great. Well done. So, you know, sometimes in prayer times, you can sort of walk around your house and stomp the floor or shout or just however you want to do that. Make declarations. It's a good moment to make declarations like we did this morning. And then the next bit. Now, these next two verses, it gets really heavy into money. God is so interested in material provision. It is amazing. So we're to pray this. Give us this day our daily bread and actually the structure of the Greek words there is give us today the bread of tomorrow so it's not a prayer for I just need today what I need today and I just need tomorrow what I need tomorrow he's saying actually give us up front the provision we need for what's to come so it's give us today the bread for tomorrow rather than oh I'm in tomorrow and I need it now it's like I've already got it because it came yesterday that that's the sense of we're actually not just authorized, we're encouraged to pray for financial provision in our lives. Jesus, when he teaches us how to pray, says, ask God for money. And ask for it ahead of when you need it. This is the will of God that we're looking at here. And then the next verse says, it's the ESV we've got up here. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven debtors. Now, when I prayed it at school, it was, forgive us my sins as I forgive those who sinned against me. Now, I totally believe that we should ask God for forgiveness and that we should forgive those that have sinned against us. But probably the best scholarship currently is actually this. And actually, what is the next verse after give us our daily bread is actually, God, will you, um, will, you, will you pay off my debts? Will you cancel my debts as we cancel the debts of others? So, I don't know, anybody in the room, maybe you've lent somebody 20 quid this morning. In answer to this prayer, you should forgive them the 20 quid or the whatever it is. But, Ask God to cancel your debts. It's actually legitimizing us going to the Lord and encouraging us to say, uh, Jesus, would you pay off my car loan? It's not something I, I do often, but that's, that's the main sense of what he's saying here. And it's kind of got spiritualized into forgiving debts and sins, but really he's saying, isn't that shocking to us? But he's so concerned about our material provision and he knows that we need that to live to switch the lights on he he knows that we've been in recession and now we've we've had crazy inflation and now we've got bonkers interest rates so he's saying why don't you ask me (coughs) to cancel your debts we actually had someone in the church who had 30,000 pounds worth of debt and through a series of miraculous things it all went amazing so I don't think it would take much encouragement to get you to stand for this one. <laughs> I'm told it wasn't 30, it was 80,000, so it's even more amazing. So, why don't we just take a moment and think about all the money you owe, whether it's credit cards, car loans, mortgage, mortgages, and let's ask our Heavenly Father 
to clear our debts. But the rider is, if somebody owes you money, you've got you to gotta forgive it. <laughs> you, know that, you know that two pounds I lent you, whatever it is, all right? So I don't know how you want to do this. I'm just going to give you a moment to say, Father, pay off my stuff, so just do it with him. This morning, as I was praying about this, I felt the Holy Spirit say, somebody's going to get a major debt cancellation in this church this week. So let's go. Father God, we thank you. You've encouraged us to pray for our debts to be cancelled. I thank you that you forgive us our sins, and we do forgive those that sin against us, but we also recognize that you, the things that bother us bother you and that you want to see us in a great place with regard to this whole thing of debt and finance in Jesus name I release debt cancellation to this church right now in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. Have, have a chair and then he says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil the, the reality is, and there's tons of scriptures we don't have time to look up, but the reality is we are in spiritual warfare all the time. And, it, and it's this unseen realm that we, even if we don't know it, we're still interacting with it and it's interacting with us. Even if we don't believe it's there, doesn't change the fact that we are in a war where the spirit realm is interacting with us. <clears throat> and this is difficult for us to comprehend sometimes because <clears throat> we think every thought and feeling we have is our own and has its origins in our own lives. But there's actually two other possible sources of the things that you begin to think and feel. One is the Holy Spirit because as children of God, God wants to share his thoughts and heart with us. And, and, and it, certainly in times of prayer, you start to get things from him. And uh, you don't need to have an audible voice for God to speak to you. He speaks to you on, on the inside. But also, and I can't completely explain this, but I can prove it to you biblically, the enemy is out to sow deceptive thoughts in your mind. So our enemy, the devil, the, his name is deceiver or sower of lies and deception uh, he is constantly finding ways to sow stuff in you. Now, this would be easy if every morning he showed up in a big rubber suit with horns on and a pitchfork and said, hi, I'm the enemy and I want you to do this today because we'd all go, no ways, get out of my life. Yeah, it, It's more subtle than that and it happens uh, internally. We have this battle that, that we, we can go on and so Jesus is telling us and asking us to pray to not be led into temptation but be delivered from evil. To be delivered from all that is negative, all that is destructive, all that is going to impoverish us. Yeah. So all the negative, we talked about loads of positive stuff this morning about Provision, peace, righteousness, forgiveness, all the beautiful things that are in God and he wants to share with us. But there's a load of stuff that's contrary to that, that has it root, its roots in dark places and dark thinking that we need to pray to be delivered from and that we don't get led into more, of, more trouble. Yeah? So Jesus is saying, as part of this, prayer rhythm this prayer outline I'm giving you deliberately pray that you won't be led into temptation or literally not led into an ordeal is probably the better word God I don't want to be led into any more trouble it's a good prayer eh? it's good to pray that we, we you can you, you let today have enough trouble for today God I pray I won't be led into any more trouble and I pray for my friends that they would be led out of their trouble And then we pray, deliver us from evil. And you can see Jesus prays something like this for his disciples before the crucifixion. He actually says, it looks like it's just to Peter, but the devil's wanted to sift you, but I have prayed for you 
that your faith wouldn't fail. So it's good to pray for one another that our faith wouldn't fail in those tight times and pray for ourselves that our faith wouldn't fail. Yeah? So what does it mean to be delivered from evil? Let me give you some things to work with here. The main thing the enemy wants to do is lie to us. And he wants to lie to us about the nature of God. He wants to lie to us about the nature of your relationship with God. He wants to lie to you and sow negative thoughts about other people. And he also wants to lie to you about your future and create anxiety. Even tomorrow, he wants to sow thoughts already in you today that make Monday a more anxious possibility than it is when you're lovely, having a lovely, beautiful time worshipping Jesus. He wants, you to, he wants you to feel like there's a big ogre walking around the corner that's going to gobble you up on Monday morning rather than you're actually the giant in God and everything else is going to be dealt with by you because you have him with you and he's going to lead you as a shepherd and all the, he leads you in victory and all the stuff we just prayed, yeah? So he wants to sow fear and he wants to sow lies about your nature, God's nature and the nature of the future and he wants to criticize you. He wants you to feel small, he wants you to feel condemned, he wants you to feel like you're no good. He wants you to feel like everybody else is God's favorite except you. He wants you to feel that all the things that you maybe got messed up in your life were all your fault and you're now stuck with it and there's no redemption. He wants you to feel all kinds of rubbish like that. That's actually all rubbish because as we've already praised God, he's our righteousness for free, he's our forgiveness, etc., etc. So when we're praying to be delivered from the evil one we want delivered from the junk that starts to disqualify us from our relationship with God that lives in our head and we need to want to be delivered from the junk that gets fear inside of us about what's going to happen in our tomorrows I'm sure nobody in this room has any of those kind of problems the other thing is we we do tend to have habits that are not healthy but are hard to break thoughts that are not healthy that are hard to control we need delivered from the evil one that's not coming from you you don't want them it's not coming from God he doesn't want you to have them there's only one other possible source deliver us from the evil one so we're going we're gonna to stand and we're going to pray some personal deliverance okay I'm maybe just going to lead us on a few, because I've I, I scattered a few categories, you know. Let's try and, and I'm sure that it landed for some of us. Let's just kind of take it, dial it down a bit and take them one at a time. Let's pray, first of all, to be delivered from the fear of tomorrow. What, what, something will pop in your head if you've got a fear of tomorrow it's there already it may have been there before you know whatever your thing is let's bring it to Jesus right now and we're asking to be delivered from the fear of tomorrow not from you're not being delivered from tomorrow but from the fear of what may or may not take place okay so I'll say it and then you say it Jesus I pray that you would deliver me from any fear I have about tomorrow. Let's do it together. Jesus, I pray you would deliver me from any fear I have about tomorrow. Deliver me from the evil one. Jesus, I pray you would deliver me from any lies I believe about myself. Jesus, I pray you would deliver me from any lies I believe about myself. Deliver me from the evil one. 
Jesus, I pray you would deliver me from any habits or thoughts I struggle to overcome. Jesus, I pray you would deliver me from any habits or thoughts I struggle to overcome. Deliver me from the evil one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So right now, in Jesus' name, we declare freedom from the evil one over every mind and every body in this room. That we will walk out of here with clearer heads, freer hearts, and healthier bodies, and abundant things happening in our finances because you've delivered us, Jesus, from the evil. And you've already done it, but we want to see it done in our lives. We want to see it happening now. We want to see those worries evaporate right now in Jesus' name. We want to see those habits that we've wrestled with just disappear like fall, fall like dust to the ground in Jesus' name. And you know what they are. Just let, let him do it. Let him do it with you and let him do it for you because he is the deliverer. He is our deliverer. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Have, have a seat. Um, just going to close with a story and then give Jan the mic, I think. Uh, two weeks ago, I was getting some money out of the cash till at Sainsbury's. And uh, I met a, a lady, Teresa and I know, from the gym that we go to. And she was just out, outside Sainsbury's near the cash till. And she'd got, she looked in pain and she'd got this leg brace on from about here down to her ankle, all, an external brace. And she's actually a fitness instructor in our gym. You know, she's in there regularly for herself as well as actually being a leader of some of the classes. And here she is struggling to walk with this leg brace on her. On her. And I said, hi, Zara, hey, what's happened? She said, and she's, she's, she's in tears. She's like, I went skiing and I've, every possible ligament meniscus in her knee she totally wrecked. So she's messed up her ACL, meniscus, ligaments. All, all the thing was totally messed up. She said, uh, there's a huge weight on the NHS for this sort of stuff, so I'm having to go private. She's the main breadwinner. She's the one that ferries the kids around. It was affecting her job. She was in tears. She was like, my income is toast. I've got to find money to pay for this to be fixed. You know, obviously, part of your job is a gym instructor. She's saying, and, it's gonna, and, and she had a, a completely unrelated job as well, but it was affecting that. Uh, she's saying, I, I, you won't be seeing me in the gym for months and months and months and months. You know, once I get the op, then it will be long recovery. And like, she's just so, it's messed her life up. And, and she's starting to cry. And I'm like moved with compassion. I said, can I pray with you? And Teresa had prayed with her once before years ago. So she's like, yeah. You know, like, anything. <laughs> and 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 it, when you pray for people who are not in church, they don't shut their eyes. They're just like, <laughs> so, which is fine. So I kept my eyes open. So she said, all right, if I put my hand on your shoulder? She said, yeah, sure. I took about 15 seconds. I said, just be healed, these knees and stuff. Be healed in Jesus' name. And then she, we chatted a little bit, and she went, hobbled into Sainsbury's. And I'm like, well, oh, Jesus, it's up to you. You know, you're the healer. Friday, Teresa and I in the gym for a spin class. We walk out of the spin class, and there's Zara on a, on a bike. Two weeks, she's on a bike. No calipers, no brace on her leg, nothing. So we go up to her and say, what happened to you? She said, your prayer worked. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this stuff isn't plastic. You know, deliver us from the evil one. And, and we want to pray these things in for other people, that they were de delivered from the evil one, that his kingdom would come, his will would be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Amen.